Hello everybody! So today's video is going to be a little bit different to our normal ones, as you can probably tell by this great mountain of vegetation in front of me. Um, those of you who watch our videos know that we love using natural ingredients and growing them if we can. In the past we've done calendula which we've grown from seed, uh, we've grown lavender and we've even tried growing turmeric. But something we have never ever ever done is grown our own dyes. Um, and that's what we're going to try and do today. This lovely bunch of greenery in front of me is woad. And woad is a um, traditional plant for dyeing and creating a nice blue dye that can be used to dye clothes, fabrics, or indeed to colour soap. And we've grown this ourselves from seed. The seeds look like this. And we planted these back in March. And it's now towards the end of July and we have managed to harvest our woad leaves. And I'm not gonna lie, this is the first time that I have ever done this. So it could go horribly wrong, it could go right, who knows? It's just an experiment to see if we can actually create a blue pigment that we can use to dye our soap. Um, obviously, being the first time I've done this, I don't really have a clue what I'm doing. Uh, to be honest, I didn't even really know woad was a thing until starting soap making, and I've loved gardening for years, and I never knew about woad. So, I have taken some advice from a website, woad.org.uk, uh, and that's going to be the recipe, or the process that I'm following. I've got it all printed out, so that I know what I'm doing. Um, and they also give some woad facts and things, so if you want to do it, as well as watching this video, yeah, woad.org.uk is the website that I've been using to follow this. And the first thing we need to do is rip up these leaves. They've already been washed, and I'm just going to rip them up now into fairly small pieces, but not too small because we're going to be straining them later and we don't want them to go through the colander. Now, I'm going to rip up the leaves and the stalks. There's not a huge amount of pigment concentrated in the stalks, so if you've grown this and you've got loads and loads of leaves, then you can just discard the stalks. But because I haven't got a huge amount of leafage, I'm going to throw my stalks in there too. And when you're growing woad, it's a plant that takes two years to get to full maturity, so it won't flower in the first year and it'll flower in the second year. But if you're growing for dyeing, you need to harvest the leaves in the first year. Now, so I planted these in March, and they have now, by the end of July, become ready to harvest. And it's better to harvest them when the leaves are quite young. I've got a couple that have actually taken on a purplish tint to them. Um, they're probably not going to work quite so well because the pigment's already started to break down. So you want to harvest the leaves when they're young, if possible. And I shall give you a few little facts about woad that I've got written down next to me. So, woad originated in the Mediterranean, down in Turkey, and it spread to Europe from there. And it's a very old traditional plant for dyeing with. It's been used in Egyptian times, found in tombs, things like that. Ooh. And it was used in the Middle Ages here as well, sort of medieval times for dyeing cloth and dyeing fabric for all the rich people. It's used a lot in medicine and Chinese medicine and things like that. Um, they reckon it can be used to help with breast cancer. Chinese use it in medicine... <laughs> For things like coughs and colds. Um, I'm not going to say a lot more about that right at the minute, but that's what they say they use it for in Chinese medicine. And it's also, in olden times, was used for magic, in magic rituals to do with shape-shifting and... Do, 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 and the study of past lives. There we go. Woad is pretty easy to grow, so this is my first time growing it and I'm fairly happy with the harvest that I've got. Probably would have got more if I'd fed it a little bit, but didn't bother because I just didn't get around to it. Um, if you're growing woad, just be aware that it can be quite invasive, which means it can take over everything. 
And if you're growing woad in America, be even more careful because because it is invasive, it is actually illegal to intentionally cultivate it in 11 out of the 50 states. I can't tell you which 11 states it's illegal to grow in, so if you are in the US and are looking at doing this, have a look and check first that it's legal because you don't want to be illegally cultivating woad. Uh, there's a list online somewhere that tells you which states it's illegal to grow it in. And through the magic of technology, it is now all chopped up. And it's time to move on to the next step, which is going to be placing them in water and just steeping them for 10 minutes. Um, it is best to use soft water, according to my source. Um, they say rainwater, but I haven't collected rainwater and we haven't had rain for ages anyway. So I know that we've got hard water here. So what I did is just went to the supermarket and bought a load of still spring water. I don't know if it's soft water, but it's certainly gonna be better than tap water. So we have filled our container two thirds full and I shall take you over there now to show you. So we've brought our spring water to 90 degrees centigrade and now we are adding in the woad. And once we've added all the woad, we need to keep it at 80 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes, just allowing it to steep. So I'm just pressing this all in so it's all in the water. We have got quite a lot of woad here. Oh, it smells like spinach or something. I suppose it's a similar sort of thing, isn't it? Leafy green stuff. <laughs> My cauldron of delights. So now that's all in the pan, like I say, we're just going to leave it for 10 minutes at 80 degrees and then we're going to move on to cooling it down, which needs to be done pretty quickly. So now we need to get this liquid, which is at 80 degrees, down to 55 degrees as quickly as possible. And this is to stop the woad breaking down. The quicker you cool it, the better it is. So I've got ice blocks and cold water in this sink and I'm just going to continually stir it, trying to help it cool down nice and quickly. And it was recommended to try and get it down to 55 degrees in five minutes or less. So let's see how we go. So we had a successful cooling down session. We managed to get it down to, well, 54.7 centigrade in five minutes, so that's perfect. And now we are just gonna strain it through this colander. Now I'm gonna pop my gloves on because it is gonna be fairly hot and it is gonna be fairly messy. So gloves at the ready. And I'm just gonna squeeze as much of the liquid as possible out of the leaves to make sure it all goes through the colander down into the pan. And when you squeeze all the liquid out from the leaves, the leaves can now be discarded. We do not need these leaves anymore. So chuck them on the compost, feed them to your kids, that sort of thing. I'm only joking, don't feed the leaves to your kids. <laughs> Unless they've been naughty. <laughs> I'm, I'm still joking. Don't, don't eat the leaves. So we've managed to strain all the woad now. We've discarded the leaves and we are left with a big old vat of what looks like slightly muddy green water. Now we're just going to tip the liquid back into the pot. And now, oh, and now... I'm going to test the temperature and we want it to be below 50 degrees for our next step. Yeah, we're down at 42, so that is fine. So for the next step, we are going to be using an ingredient that those of you who make soap are probably very familiar with. And it's an ingredient that actually when you're making soap, you tend to not really want. And it is sodium carbonate, otherwise known as soda ash. And we have got a mug here, which I've filled with boiling spring water. And we add three teaspoons of the soda ash into this mug. 
and we're going to dissolve it really well and this is going to help to raise the alkalinity of the solution and help to get that woad pigment extracting nicely. If you add the soda ash in when you're above 50 degrees centigrade then you're going to destroy your woad pigment so you don't want to be doing that. So yeah, if in doubt err on the slightly cooler side I would say. Right, so now that's dissolved, I'm going to just simply add it in to our woad pigment, mix it in, and I'm looking for a pH of around about 9 for this. Got some little tester strips just here. I'm not sure they're working very well. I don't know how old they are. Well, how old are they? I don't know, I found them at the pub. You found them at the pub. I'm using tester strips that you found at the pub. <laughs> Cola. Okay, so the tester strips that Wayne found on the floor of the pub <laughs> don't, don't seem to be doing a lot. Uh, there's no other real option. We'll just have to hope that it's where it should be. We've, we followed the instructions, so we're going to hope that it's a pH of about 9. And now we need to aerate it using a electric whisk or a manual whisk. We don't have an electric whisk, so it's going to be a manual one. I did forget to say that after adding the soda ash, the liquid should be a greeny brown colour. And we have got a greeny brown colour, so we're hoping that's going to be okay. I'm going to use this whisk now. We're looking for it to go frothy, and the froth should hopefully turn blue and then turn green again, possibly. Um, this is probably going to take quite a while. You're basically just aerating it and helping to release the pigment. Smells funny! Smells like vegetables, vegetable water, which I suppose it essentially is. <laughs> so it took us probably about 10 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes to aerate it to this level. Our froth went nice and blue. Now it's kind of turning back green a little. So we've got our blue green froth. Uh, now it's basically a waiting game. Um, but yeah, we're gonna pop this to the side for two to three hours. So we've left this for three hours now, and I'm not going to lie, it does look and, yep, smell a little bit like a trip to the farm. We're going to take a ladle now, and we're just going to gently scoop out the froth from the top, really carefully, because we don't want to disturb the liquid at the bottom that has settled with the sediment. Mmm, delicious, delicious pudding! <laughs> So now we've got rid of most of the froth, what we need to do is get rid of one third of the liquid. Again, really carefully, because all the pigment and the sediment will have gone down to the bottom. It's settled out over the last three hours, and we don't want to be throwing away any of that. So we are very carefully just going to gradually tip the liquid away like this, the top sort of third. This could take a while. So we've now discarded all of the foam and about a third of the liquid, so we can get rid of this now. This is no longer needed. Now we need to get this from this pan into a selection of uh, jars. And I'm hoping that I've got enough jars and containers. And we're basically gonna use the funnel to get that liquid to fill these containers. So this may take some time. I'm going to do it as carefully as I can. I don't want to spill anything. So all the woad is out of the a big cauldron now and we have carefully placed it into all of these receptacles. And now we are playing the waiting game again. It's another two, three hours that we have to wait for the sediment to settle out. Then we need to come back and siphon off the water on the top condense it all into one jar, and then move on. Right, so it's been about three hours or so, not quite sure how long exactly, because we've lost track of time. But these have settled down now, and we just need to siphon off most of the water. We're leaving about six centimetres in the bottom of each container. So yeah, I'm just gonna start by siphoning off the liquid at the top. You can use a um, pipette or a spoon, or you can just tip it if you want to. If you are going to tip it, you need to just be a little bit careful that you don't disturb the sediment at the bottom. 
Right, so we've siphoned off the majority of that word solution now, and that can just be discarded. We're going to be working with the last six centimetres in the bottom of each of these jars. And all we need to do is consolidate all of these into one jar. And I'm hoping they're going to fit in this one. So I'm just going to tip them in one by one. Oh! <laughs> right, okay. Talk about cutting it fine, but all of the solution has just about fitted in this one. I'm not going to move it now because I can't. It's literally at the top there. We need to leave this for another couple of hours now to settle out. Then we need to repeat the process, siphon it off and refill it with some clean water. So uh, yeah, another couple of hours wait now and then we shall be back again. Then we're going to pop down to the shops and buy the real dye. <laughs> So it's now just past 10 in the evening. We started this over 12 hours ago and there is still plenty left to do. Yeah, so same as before basically, just siphoning off, say, the top two thirds of this liquid very carefully to avoid, yeah, sediment disturbance. <laughs> right, so the top two thirds have been siphoned off and again, we can just discard these now and we are left with just the bottom third there. And just top it up with fresh clean water up to about the level that we were at before. So it's a whole new day now and we are back to siphoning out the top two thirds of the solution. Basically, we have to do this and keep replacing the water, then leaving it to settle for two to three hours until we have clear water over blue sediment. Colour of the water is definitely different than it was last night. Last night it was greener, and now it's kind of got a bluey brown tinge to it. I don't know if that's a good sign or not, but we will find out. Right, so that's the water siphoned off, and now we are going to replace it with, again, more of the fresh spring water. Just up to the same level that it was. So that last little bit of video cut off, we ran out of space on the camera, but as you can imagine, we were just doing exactly what we were doing before, siphoning it out, and now we've left it for, oh, it must be four or five hours, it says to leave it for two or more, but I guess leaving it a little bit longer, it's just going to help the sediment to settle that little bit more. So we're on to a new day now, and I thought I'd change the camera angle just to keep things a little more interesting, because I know this isn't the most exciting video in the world, but uh, we're back to siphoning. <laughs> The colour of the water is definitely starting to change now. Um, and the reason that this video is so long is because I want to be able to show you guys exactly how this is done. Because when I'm learning something new, I sometimes like to watch the whole process step by step just to see properly what I'm doing. And videos can be helpful for that. So that is why I'm showing you everything bit by bit. Just so you can hopefully follow things and really get an idea of how it works. So apologies for the uh, long length, but hopefully it'll help some of you. So we're all siphoned out now, and with this camera angle, you can kind of see just how low I am going with this as well. Back to topping it up with the fresh, clean water. And hopefully we won't have to do this many more times before we do see the clear water over the blue sediment. And to be honest, I'll probably skip out the next one or two filterings because you've seen it before, you know what the drill is. I'll just tell you how many we've done rather than showing it to you every single time because otherwise this video is going to be like epic movie length. So it's now four days since we started this project and I think we're getting close to being finished. We have repeated the siphoning of the water and replacing with fresh water three times. Uh, I didn't bother showing you that because you've seen us do it before. And we now have relatively clear water over the blue sediment at the base. 
which is brilliant because it means it's doing what it's meant to be doing. So now we just have to, for one last time, siphon out as much as possible of this clear water at the top. So now I've taken out as much of the water as I dare and we are left just with the dark blue sediment and a tiny amount of water at the top. What we need to do now is get a dish which I've lined with cling film. Uh, you can use an old baking tray, a ceramic plate, anything like that. I've chosen this dish which I've lined with, say, with cling film. And what we need to do now is tip the remaining sediment and the water from here into this dish. Carefully so as not to spill it. So now we've tipped the remaining sediment and water into this dish and you can see the kind of blue that we're getting from the little bit that I have got on my fingers so we're getting a nice blue there. We need to leave this for another two to three days just so the water can evaporate and we're going to be left with the pigment just in the bottom. Uh, we need to leave it somewhere warm, so by a radiator or by a sunny window, and just allow the water to evaporate off, and that will hopefully leave us with the powder, which we can then use, finally, for creating our woad dyed soap. Yay! So it's been about 24 hours, and because it's been so hot, this has actually all evaporated and properly dried up already, and we can already see how small amount we're going to get. But we're going to use this scraper tool now. I can't remember what this is actually called. Just a scraper. Just a scraper. And we're going to carefully scrape it away from the plate and hopefully it'll come away quite easily. As you'll see, we're not actually using the cling film anymore. And that is because after it started drying yesterday, I tried to scrape a little bit away from the cling film and it didn't work. It was properly getting stuck to the cling film. So we uh, quickly moved it just onto a plain ceramic plate, which is hopefully going to make it a lot easier to scrape away. So yeah, if you're following my instructions, don't follow the cling film step, or you risk probably losing some of the woad. And it's still fairly tough scraping it away from the ceramic plate, but it is working. And I say, trying to scrape this off cling film would have been a nightmare. So I'm just going to continue carefully scraping, getting all the pigment away from the base of the plate. And then we should hopefully have our finished woad dye. So we are finally done with the woad. We scraped it all off the plate. And just to note, if you are using the plate method, don't use your best china because you don't want to wreck the plate. I don't know how well this is going to wash up, but err on the side of caution, use an old plate. But not old as in like granny's best antique stuff, old as in, you know, picked it up in the pound shop a few years ago. That's the kind of old you want for this. Anyway, we have managed to harvest, is that the right word? Extract this much woad. <laughs> that is one whole gram of woad. So when you think of all the plant that we started with, it doesn't give you a lot. Um, I say if I'd fed it better or whatever and used more leaves, we might have been able to increase this to around about sort of three, four grams. But we've got one gram, which hopefully is going to be enough to colour one loaf of soap, if we're lucky, a pale blue colour. And that's what we're going to be doing next week. So... This week's video has been all about the extraction. Next week, we're gonna be using this little bit of dye to hopefully color our natural soap a really pretty blue color. And after all the work that's gone into this, I really hope it works. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, which I say is a very different to our usual videos. If you do, let us know, leave us a comment, uh, subscribe, give us a like. Um, let us know if you'd like to see us doing more videos like this with sort of extracting natural dyes and things like that because it's something that we will consider doing. Not very often though because it's incredibly time consuming. <laughs> you can visit our website just here and if you choose to purchase anything you can use our discount code which is here. I'm really proud of this. There's only a small amount but you know what? 
we did it from scratch. We physically planted those seeds, grew those plants, extracted that dye. So even though we've got the smallest little amount, I'm so proud. And <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.